Howdy, howdy, folks. It's Tycast Buffet here again. And it's time to go racing in Pocono. It's Pocono 500, race 13 of the season. And truly, to hopefully, be a good one. We just had uh, an awesome race last weekend at Dover. Super bittersweet. Super bittersweet came one lap away from leading the most laps. We finished second. We qualified first. The guy who finished second wins the race. We dang near passed the leader. With like what one or one or two laps to go because he got held up by a engine expired on the racetrack. Anywho, though, let's go check out the standings. Uh, we are 350 points behind. I mean, we're still a solid 100 points behind 10th place, and then yeah, then it gets interesting from there. So yeah, we really need a good finish. We really, really need a good finish to go to keep this points climb. Going, we were 15th. We jumped up to 12th, so that's great. Almost won last weekend. Um, we'll be racing on just the normal primary paint scheme. Let's it go forward. Let's go to Picanoo. All right, folks. We qualified on pole. Back-to-back -back poles for the Sitco team. We got it last week at Dover, and we got it one in Pocono. That's our third pole of the season. So we have Richmond. Dover and Pocono. I don't know, but I just hope we can get a top 10. That's what I want. I really, really want a top 10 today. We need the points. We really need the points. Let's send it down the pre race ceremonies. MRN is live in Pennsylvania today at the Pocono Raceway for the Pocono 500. This track produces some of the fastest racing of the year, but it also presents some special challenges to the drivers. Well, this is one of NASCAR's toughest tracks, especially for the crews who set up these race cars. Nothing is the same in any aspect of this racetrack. Three totally different corners, three straightaways of different lengths, enough to drive a crew chief crazy. Jeff Burton had a great run in qualifying this week. You're right, Joe, and what a welcome relief this must be. This team has been working hard all year, but it seems they can never catch a break in qualifying. This time, they're starting up front. Jeff Burvis is towards the bottom of the points list this season. And how frustrating that must be. You're working just as hard as everyone else, yet you just can't seem to finish well on race days to gain the valuable points you need. These guys need a good finish just to regain their confidence as a team. Engines are fired. It's Jimmy Johnson and Jeff Burton on the front row. Sterling Marlin. Looks like Jeff Gordon and Tony Stewart will round out the top five. A Craven from the Tide Ford up in the top ten as well. We had such a close, close finish last week at Dover. I really want to win this. Race. Like I really, really want to win this race. Right. Green flag. Let's hope we can get a good one, folks. 20 laps. It's Pocono 500, not the 400. Sterling Marlin's already digging deep on the inside, trying to get around. Let's see if we can get a good apex into turns one. One thing I've noticed is you have to stay in the throttle to make the corner. Hendrick Motorsports, 1-2. Here comes Roush Fenway's in number 99. Inside looking, what is this freaking... NASCAR 06, Jeff Gordon and Jimmy Johnson. Woo. You know, I gotta really remind myself that you have to stay in the throttle to make the corner. That's one thing I've noticed. I'm having, I'm having to um, kind of go the opposite way. Like, see, I'm, I'm, I'm in the throttle when I'm making the corner, but if I use the brakes, oh my goodness, that was close. If I use the brakes, it just slows me down and I don't do as good. Sometimes you have to tap it maybe to set up the corner, but can't just lock it up and then just jump to the throttle. You gotta kind of roll in, tap it, jump on the throttle, try to make it turn. Ugh. It's like we stuck way to the outside, but then again, we did, we, we stayed almost neutral. We're, we're right there with the draft, and Jeff Gordon, uh, I believe, is our points leader. He's gonna get a little bit more points. It's not gonna help us at all. We need to wreck him. 
Just racing hard. Outside groove. Really fast. Just don't want him to lead in all the laps. Because then he'll get extra bonus points. And that's the last thing that DuPont team needs. He's the points leader. He's the guy we're racing for the championship. We did not have a good turn three there. And here comes Tony Stewart in the mix looking for another win. I forget what race he won. I don't know if it was uh, Las Vegas or was it um, Rocket? I, my guess is Rocket. Really big run there. Returns one on Gordon. We should have get around them. We've got to seal the deal. We have the car to do it. We qualified on pole. We can do it, man. We can do it. Inside looking, inside looking. A little bit of contact there. Oh, in the wall. Oh, my goodness, Gordon. Oh, my Lord. That was aggressive. You know, I'm not sure if Gordon... Uh, caught the tailing of my car and spun out or he hit the wall and I did and he spun out as well so I'm not sure I did not mean to wreck Gordon there anywho though it's me and Tony Stewart battling for the Pocono lead we gotta get some laps I want bonus points folks I want bonus points I mean we pull away you know we're getting a little bit of a pull, a pull if we can uh get back to the throttle like we want to, but we can't use the brakes as much as I want to. We have to let the car roll in, which is scary, because then you're going to think, oh, I'm just going to hit the wall, but that's the only way you're making these corners at good speed. Like, right now, I'd be thinking I'm right where that Winston Cup series sign would be, but no, it actually, the throttle helps the car turn. It's really weird. When you're on the outside of one and two, or turns one, it actually doesn't do half bad, but if you're on the outside of turns three, with it being so flat, not a lot of banking, it just hurts the speed more than anything. I love Pocono. I really do. It, it's one of my favorite tracks on the circuit. I just, whoa, Tony Stewart came down on there. But a lot of people say Pocono's boring. You know, it's really strung out. It's not flash. I, I love Pocono. It's one of my favorite races to watch every year. Uh, I'm glad they race there twice. But it reminds me so much of an NASCAR and TNT Summer Series they used to do. And NASCAR and TNT, uh, say what you want about it, but they were light years better than ESPN. ESPN NASCAR stuff was awful. NASCAR and TNT was absolutely great. I, I love it. I mean, it's not better than Fox, but I'll, I'll take it. If you could, t if, if I could have NASCAR and TNT instead of NASCAR and NBC, I'd. I don't know. That'd be a tough call to me because NASCAR and NBC with them putting their crap on an alternate channel that NASCAR and you know, NBC is and stuff. Just... Oh, Tony Stewart digging deep, trying to get around for the lead. No contact there. But, I don't know. I, I just I miss NASCAR and TNT so much. And I always remember um, the first race of their little broadcast, you know, month and a half was at Pocono, the first one. But yeah, it was it was really cool. I miss those days very much. One thing I do notice about the old Pocono is that t after turn uh, turn number one and through that little the little straightaway there, it's not nothing little about it, but in that straightaway there, there's um a lot. No fence. There's a lot of no fence. I mean, look at this. There's like nothing. I, mean, I don't even think there's anything there. I think it's just, yeah, it's complete air. Like, look at this. It's freaking trees. So, I mean, if you get up on the wall, your car can hit that tree and just do a barrel. I mean, I, I love that. It's, it's dangerous. You know, it's exciting. Should it be a wall there? Of course there should be. But, or, there's a wall there, but you know what I mean, fence-wise. Yeah. I love Pocono. It's one of my favorite racetracks. It's honestly a track I would love to go see. Or go see in person and actually watch a race there. I think that'd be great. Anyhow, back to the race. And it's lap 7 out of 20. I'm going to take lap 8. Uh, I think we're going to pit on lap 9. Not coming to lap 9, but coming to lap 10, but on lap 9. I think that's be the best time to pit because we want to make sure we have enough to get to the end. 
the same time, we don't want to uh, go wait too long and lose too much time on the leaders, but we don't want to come in too early and, you know, ruin our entire race by running out of gas when we're contending for a great spot. And my point exactly. Hitting the wall. Gotta love it. Stay out one more lap. Car is getting really tight though. Definitely not helping our case. Let's look at the top five. It's Tony Stewart, Sterling Lamar, and Jeff Gordon, Ricky Rudd. Gordon, our points leader. We gotta get ahead of him. Right now, we're the, if the race would end right now, we would have the most laps led, which would get us an extra 10 bonus points, which would definitely help us. Wait, is it 10 extra bonus points or five? I don't I think it's actually five. Yeah, I think it's five. It's 10 in total. Anywho, though, it adds up. It really does. It adds up. So we're going to pit this time. I think... Well, I think like the, the actual fuel mileage stretch for this track, I think it's 12 laps. The race being 20 laps, you cut it in half. Uh, it should be about two to one lap, or two laps to one lap. Good, you could throw away, so meaning you could pit those, uh, pit a little early. We're gonna pit right now. Let's hope we can get a good, clean pit stop. No mistakes, folks. No mistakes. Repair damage. Oof. Man. I love sitting on the floor while you play NASCAR during their 2003 game. I love it. So yeah, four tires. Full tank of gas. Should be about a 15.8. Let's hope we can get like a 15.6 or 7. Gain as much time as we can. Give us the best chance to get out back there with any, you know, like within any, you know, arms reach of the leader. That's what I'm looking for. Go, 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 go. 15.5, that's exactly what we're looking for. Great pit stop, guys. Right, so no mistakes. Just a good four off, four on. Let's go back out to the track. We gotta start running qualifying laps now, because we gotta get we gotta gain as much crap as we can. And just hope there's not a caution, because if the caution comes out, then we're trapped and then we're just done. We're done. <laughs> Oh no, the Pocono is such a hard racetrack because it's so unorthodox. It's it's so different than any other racetrack on the circuit. Like I'm having to drive with the throttle rather than me just like jumping out of the gas and just letting it roll. I'm actually having to use the throttle to turn. It's so weird. And then each turn is different. So it's it's really weird. It handles like a road course almost. Up to twenty fifth in counting. I've, we just passed Tony Stewart and Jeff Gordon, meaning that we either had a perfect pit stop or they had a slow one. We just got ahead of them. So that's great. Uh, I'm, I believe Rusty's already pitted, though. So maybe this is for position. I, I don't know. Uh-oh. Sorry, Rusty. Are super loose. That yeah, was for a position. Jeff Gordon's heating us up, and oh my God, Jeff Gordon just uh... Rusty Wallace just made Jeff Gordon like go on his lid. <laughs> I hope y'all seen that. That was crazy. Yeah, I, I guess Rusty got mad at me because I kind of hit him. And then he went like all the way down the apron, came up, and missed his turn. When the AI does that, they jerk. They jerk right, right? And he just slammed. Slammed at Gordon. And, oh, my, and Tony Stewart just did the same thing Rusty did to me. Oh, I am paying you back, Tony. I'm not going to deal with that. That is chicken crap right there. Tony, you are getting it. Yeah, I am paying Tony Stewart back. I do not care. 
That is crap. And, and look at this stupid Ryan Newman just gonna go around. No, no offense to him, I think it's cool. But it's just stupid though how fast they are on the exits, man. It really ticks me off how fast they are. And we can't even get that. It really irritates me. And look at this. We're gonna freaking barely make the corner. It's just ridiculous how fast they are. We are running the same car. We should be going the same way, like, same speed. I, I, I don't know. I'm trying not to complain. It's just, it's so irritating. It's so irritating, man. Look, Jimmy Johnson, you know, he's got... I, I just... So irritating. So irritating, man. We have a car to win, and we can't even get back up there. Because look how tight the car is. It's freaking... Oh my god. This is ridiculous. So, yeah, I'm going into rage mode now. No, Johnson. You're not getting by me. Freaking Tony Stewart. I will pay him back. I do not care if it costs me a raise. I'm going to pay him back. That was uncalled for, for just diving below the line and just completely smashing into me. Oh, look at this. going to be three wide because we have absolutely no straight line speed. And look, we're in an awful scenario. We had to back out of it. And we're going to lose every position. And Gordon, that was on his lid earlier, is going to pass me. It makes no sense how they're that fast. It just makes no sense. And look at this. Thrall time, the same time they get back to the thrall, and look how fast they are. They just gained five car links. That makes. I don't even know. I should just shush right now. It's very frustrating. Very frustrating. I'm turning the car all the way to the left as much as I can, and we still can't even make the corner. And our tires are not even yellow yet. That, that really explains a lot. It shows how bad we are sometimes. Oh, look at this. We're going to go straight in the wall. Yeah, I got to love that. Oh, yeah. 12th place. Gotta love, no top 10, nothing. Competing for the win, and then we just do our com car is completely crap out after the pit stop. Gotta love it. It makes absolutely total sense. How our car running the same line can be amazing, and then after the pit stop, it's just crap. Well, I mean, look at this. You can't even make the corner now. And we're not even on yellow tires yet. We can't even run the same line we were running earlier. And I do not think it's the damage that's caused that. And when we do make the corner, look at the speed they get. It is ridiculous. This is just stupid. 15th spot? Are you kidding me? I don't even care anymore. Sorry, Jeff Green. I don't even care anymore. Oh my god. What the heck? Oh. Uh, <laughs> I did not mean to do that, I swear. Yeah, that was, um. Uh, that was my bad. My bad. Wow. To be honest, what you're always trying to do is just door green to get around them. Didn't mean to. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that was that was terrible. I mean, I, I do apologize. That's quite embarrassing. I just took out Nate and uh, Jeff Green. We're not gonna pit. That was embarrassing. And we're going to get a terrible restart, and we're not going to get any better than 15th. Change my mind. And imagine that, it's the last lap. This is just a race I just want to forget. No. I love it how everyone else can stay on the bottom of the racetrack. No, Craven, no. Oh my god, we're so loose, man. Sorry, Craven. I'm just frustrated. I don't want to hit anyone right now. I just want to get done with this race. 
I'm just super frustrated with myself. How we can go from leading the race, having a contend contending for the win, and our car we pit, right? And it's just garbage, bro. It is just so garbage. And Tony Stewart hits us, right? And then we, our car has nothing. Like, I, I'm running the same line, and, and it's still nothing. And then I overdrive it, trying to gain the speed, and I hit the wall. We're going to come home the 17th. Oh, this is what I want to forget. And Tony Stewart wins, of course. Yeah, um, Tony Stewart, I am going to pay you back. Just saying. I did not mean for this race to turn out what it did. I do apologize. I mean, the whole Gordon break and stuff, that was crazy. Well, I really do, didn't mean to hit green there. But let's look at the positives. This race could have been a whole lot worse. We finished 17th. We, we could have finished a lot better, but we could have finished a lot worse. I'm just going to call it a day. That's, that's disappointing, but hey, you know, you got to take the good with the bad, you got to take the bad with the good. It, 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 you know, it happens. We showed a lot of speed in the first half, and we were leading. I mean, we were pulling away, and then we pit, and then we're just getting ran over. It, it's literally Phoenix all over again. And I don't know if it's the AIs, that they're programmed to be faster after the pit stop, or... Or what? I, I legit don't know. Because I'm... The same identical thing happened at Phoenix. I was leading, having a good race, I pit, and I come out, and the car is just nowhere near as fast. Nowhere near as fast. And then... And what's crazy is I came out in front of the leaders. Generally, I came out behind the leaders. The leaders happen to be Tony Stewart and uh, Jeff Gordon. But I came out in front of them. Or actually, you know, Rusty Wallace would be considered the leader, I think. But I came out in front of him. And they, and Tony Stewart just absolutely did a cheap shot on me. I know it was a, you know, it was just AI issue there, but still, they did a cheap shot on me and took my race away from me. And now, we finished 17th, but I, I don't know how to really, you know, put my finger on this one. You can say that the AI are just faster after you pit the second time. You could say I just flat out did a terrible job and I'm going to go with the second one and say I did a flat out terrible job because I absolutely, I let my emotions kind of get the best of me. Not racing as clean as I should have a few times after the, the Stewart incident. Uh, just, it's frustrating, man. You know? A lot of people say that, oh, you know, it's just, you know, just not a left turn. No, you, you get into these games, man. You get into them, you know. You get into them and you feel the emotion. You know, it's hard, you know. You're trying to win a championship. Every little moment counts. And you come on 17. But, yeah. I, I say we salvaged this day as best we could. The car was absolutely garbage. Like, I was, I would roll into the corners and the car would just have no throttle off. So I'm thinking, let's overdrive it. You know, try to get as much speed as I can. Then I hit the wall. It's just, I can't win. After after the students in the car, we just shot, man. It was just shot. <sighs> it, hey, at least we finished. It's all that matters. Didn't mean to take out green. Anywho, though, this video's gone on long enough. I appreciate all those who watched this video. Thank y'all so much. If you like the video, please leave a like below. I appreciate every like and every comment, everything. If you want to see more content, content from Diecast Buffet, please subscribe. We've got customs, got Diecast reviews, all that good stuff. Stop motions, it's all Diecast Buffet. Please subscribe. I do upload very consistently. Small YouTuber trying to grow. And if you want to see even more stuff, follow me on Instagram. I do have a lot of cool stuff over there. A lot of uh, a lot of, you know, photos and stuff of my, my projects, you know, stop motion tracks and custom die cast, just, you know, cool things like that. Also, some upcoming stuff for my YouTube, so go check me out over there. It's like the behind the scene thing, behind the scenes stuff on Instagram. Anywho, though, hope you have a great one. Die cast. Bye-bye. Signing off.